Welcome to a new video and today I'm going to talk about the 23rd SS Freiwilligen Panzergrenadier Division Nederland, the Nederlandische Nummer 1. After the successes of Germany's Blitzkrieg attacks on Poland and the West in 1939-1940, many European fascists saw Germany as an answer to the Bolshevik problem. Reichsführer SS Heinrich Himmler, with the support of Hitler, began a campaign in late 1940 to recruit those European fascists of sufficiently Aryan stock into a series of legions under control of the Waffen SS. The SS Volunteer Standard in Northwest was formed to cater the volunteers from the Low Countries. The Dutch were seen as especially well qualified for service in the SS. A large recruiting drive, backed by the NSB and other collaborating organizations, was begun. The drive was given an air of respectability by the support of Dutch General Staff Officer Lieutenant General Hendrik A. Seifert. The drive was very successful and by April 1941 volunteers began arriving in Hamburg. They were quickly preceded and assigned for service in the Northwest. Many Dutchmen assumed that service in the Waffen SS would result in a powerful position for the Netherlands in Hitler's New World Order. By July 1941, the number of recruits meant that Northwest could be dissolved and several separate units formed. The Dutch were organized into SS Volunteer Unit Nederlande. Dutch volunteers, many members of the NSB, continued to sign up for the unit, and by July 1941 the formation was the size of a reinforced infantry battalion, boasting five fully motorized companies. The unit was again redestinated, this time as SS Volunteer Legion Nederlande. NSB leader Anton Mussert saw the Legion as the far. The unit was again redestinated, this time as SS Volunteer Legion Nederlande. NSB leader Anton Mussert saw the Legion as the forerunner to the new model Dutch Army. On the 11th of July 1941, Mussert called upon all able bodied members of the NSB to sign up for the Legion. Great efforts were made by the Germans to pressure the Dutchmen that the new unit was an all Dutch affair. And indeed, many recruits were under the impression that the Legion was an independent Dutch formation fighting alongside their German allies. General Seifert was recruited to command the Legion, and all recruits were permitted to wear the Prinsenflag, an unofficial Dutch national flag, on the sleeve of the uniform. While many recruits were convinced of the independence of the Legion, Seifert was aware of its true nature. When he discovered that this formation was to come under control of the Waffen SS, he objected, but the Germans ignored his complaints. The recruits went to basic training in Hamburg before being sent to Arais in East Prussia for further training. Despite the harsh attitude of the German Waffen SS instructors, the recruits were committed to their cause and were soon highly trained. In November 1941, the Legion was ordered to the front near Leningrad under the overall command of Army Group North. The Legion arrived at the Volkov River in mid January 1942 and began setting up a defensive line. For the next few weeks, it was engaged in operations to prevent the Soviets from establishing a bridgehead in the west bank of the Volkov River. During this period, it was also engaged in several offensive operations against the Red Army defensive positions, as well as anti-partisan activities. In early February, Mussert visited the front, raising the morale of the troops. On the 10th of February, the Soviets launched a major offensive aimed at the relief of Leningrad. Despite being heavily outnumbered, the Legion held the line, although suffering heavy casualties. In June, the Legion had its first chance to go on the offensive, destroying a large Red Army force near Fugov Lake. During this battle, the Legion captured 3,500 prisoners, including General Andrei Vlasov, who was to become the leader of the Russian Liberation Army. In late June, it was transferred north to take part in the siege of Leningrad. After a month of relative quiet in the trenches around the city, the Legion was pulled out of the line in preparation for Operation Nordlicht, an assault on Leningrad which was to be the decisive blow. The launch of the offensive on the 14th of August was preceded by a Soviet counterstroke. This resulted in the complete failure of the operation, with many units being removed from the battle to stop the counteroffensive. After the failure of this offensive, the Legion was moved south of Leningrad, near Lake Ladoga, to defend against the expected Soviet attacks. The following battles were known as the First Battle of Ladoga. The Legion was involved in heavy fighting until the end of 1942, when it was regrouped with the 2nd SS Infantry Brigade. In early January, the Red Army launched another offensive which would be known as the Second Battle of Ladoga. The Dutch and Norwegians managed to withstand several Soviet tank attacks, destroying many T-34s with their 7.5cm Pak 97-98 anti-tank guns. After this action, the Dutch SS Sturmman Gerardus Moyman received the Knight's Cross of Iron Crosses, 
for single-handedly destroying 19 Soviet T-34s and KV-1s. Moimann was the first non-German to receive the Night Cross. On the 6th of February, General Seifert, back in Amsterdam campaigning for new recruits for the Legion, was assassinated by the Dutch resistance group CS6. The Legionnaires were stunned, but had little time to mourn their lost leader. Soviet attacks resumed and continued throughout the spring dawn. In April 1943, the Legion was ordered back to Sonnenberg to be reformed as a Panzergrenadier Brigade. Upon arrival at Sonnenberg, the Legion was dissolved and began the task of reforming as SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Brigade in Nederland. The brigade was to consist of two Panzergrenadier regiments. The two regiments were granted honor titles, the 48 SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Regiment General Seifert in honor of their dead figurehead and the 49th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Regiment De Ruiter, which was named after the 17th century Dutch Admiral Michiel De Ruiter. Added to this core force were to be reconnaissance, pioneer, panzerjäger and artillery components. The brigade was to be commanded by SS Oberführer Jürgen Wagner. In September 1943, the brigade was ordered to the independent state of Croatia to join the SS Obergruppenführer Felix Steiner's 3rd SS Panzer Corps, currently forming in the area. Upon its arrival, the brigade received 1500 Dutch recruits drawn from veterans of the SS Viking Division. During its time there, elements of the brigade were engaged in operations against Yugoslav partisans. The fighting was brutal and no quarter was given on either side, however the brigade showed itself capable in combat. During this period, the brigade was redesignated the 4th SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Brigade Nederland. At this time, the strength stood at 9,342 officers and men, that of a weak division. On Christmas Day 1943, the brigade was deemed ready for the front and along with Steiner's SS Corps was moved to the area around Orienbaum in Army Group North Sector. Upon its arrival at the front, Steiner's SS Corps was deployed in the area near Orienbaum. The corps was to form a part of the 18th Armee. Opposing the corps was General Leonie E. Govrov's Leningrad Front. On the 14th of January, the Soviets launched the Leningrad Novgorod Offensive, aimed at driving back Army Group North from the Leningrad region. The Dutch Brigade, fighting alongside the 11th SS Freiwillige Panzergrenadier Division Nordland, attempted to storm the tide of Govrov's Front, but were soon forced to fall back to avoid encirclement by Metkorov's force. The Dutchmen were involved in the 150 km fighting withdrawal to Narva River in Estonia, where a line of defense was to be established. The Dutchmen were to defend the northern and central flanks of the Ivangorod bridgehead. Steiner's men had little time to dig in, with the first Soviet attacks beginning on the 3rd of February. Despite the ferocity of these attacks, the Netherlands maintained the bridgehead over the Narva. In early March, the main focus of the Red Army assaults were directed at the De Ruyter Regiment, defending the town of Lilienbach on the northern flank. In fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Dutchmen repulsed the Soviet thrust, forcing Govrods to look elsewhere for his breakthrough. After a faint attack towards Nordland's positions, Govrov directed his forces at the General Seifert Regiment, holding the center of the line. The regiment was forced from its positions, but the counter-attack led by regimental commander SS Standardeführer Wolfgang Jürgel retook the defensive works and adverted a Soviet breakthrough. Govrov again shifted his focus back to the De Reuter. The Dutch line cracked, only at the arrival of Nordland's Panzer Battalion saved the situation. When the Panzer counterattack barked down, Kolani ordered his men to fall back to positions closer to Lilienbach. The Soviets saw this and began laying heavy artillery fire on the withdrawing Dutchmen. This was followed up with a major assault and the De Reuter suffered heavily. Company leader SS Untersturmführer Helmut Scholz gathered a group of men and went into action, retaking the De Reuter original positions giving the regiment breathing space and prevent a rout. On the 22nd of March another assault hit the De Reuter this time cutting through the lines of the 5th Company's front and threatening to annihilate the regiment. Battalion commander SS Hauptsturmführer Heinz Frühhauf formed an assault group from his headquarter personnel and attacked the 150-man Soviet force, wreaking havoc on the regiment's rear. After destroying the Soviet force in heavy fighting, he then reformed his men and cleared the regiment's trenches of enemy troops. When Govrod realized that the Dutch lines would not crack, he shifted his attention to the south to the Nordland's Denmark Regiment. The launch of Operation Bagration on the 22nd of June resulted in Govrov stepping up the pressure. 
In February, the Red Army had established a strong Grifaso bridgehead on the western bank of the Narva and threatened to cut off the entire corps. On the 23rd of July, Steiner ordered a withdrawal to the Tannenbergstellung, a prepared position 16 kilometers to the west. The General Seifert Regiment and the Brigade's artillery component were to provide a rear guard for the retreating troops. Govorov launched the Narva offensive on the German lines on the 24th of July. In the afternoon, the Netherlands artillery battalion started withdrawing across the Narva bridge. The Dutchman got involved in heavy fighting, but they somehow managed to hold off the Soviets where the last of the SS men got across the river. The Northland's pioneer battalion blew up the bridge. However, due to a colossal mistake by its officers, the General Seifert Regiment would not survive the withdrawal. Attempting to avoid the Red Army forces, the regiment was ordered to take a different route to that originally planned. The withdrawing Dutchmen were discovered by Jacob fighter bombers of the Red Air Force and were soon pinned down. Soviet ground forces were brought in to trap the withdrawing Dutchmen. Soon the regiment was under attack from the air and ground. Trapped in the open, the General Seifert never stood a chance. After a short time, it ceased to exist with only a few survivors under the command of SS Untersturmführer Nieuwendijk Hoek reaching the Tannenbergstellung a week later. With the exception of the General Seifert's loss, the withdrawal had been a success and Steiner's men began to duck in on the Tannenbergstellung in preparation for the next Soviet attack. The Netherlands had lost one of its two regiments and many valuable veterans in it. The General Seifert was ordered to be reformed at Schlochau. When the new defensive line was established, the Nederland was pulled out of combat to act as reserve, allowing the exhausted brigade a little rest and time to recuperate. Nederland began to retreat into Courland on the 23rd of September, executing a fighting withdrawal and arriving in the area near Gumi Volma in mid-October. The brigade was almost immediately attacked by a large Soviet combined armed force and suffering heavy casualties in just a few days fighting. They also managed to cut off Army Group North in the Courland area, creating what was to be known as the Courland Pocket. Stationed alongside the Northland, the brigade was involved in fierce fighting protecting the strategically vital city of Libau. During the fighting in Courland, the brigade was subject to heavy partisan attacks, and after a number of these attacks, Wagner ordered the reprisal execution of an unknown number of civilians. The second Courland offensive was launched by the Soviets on the 27th of October. The Reiter regiment saw heavy fighting, repelling two large infantry attacks. Under almost constant air bombardment, the Nederland began dugging in. The next two major offensives to crush the pocket were not in Nederland's sector, and so besides minor skirmishes, the brigade was left in relative peace for the remainder of 1944. On the 26th of January 1945, the brigade received orders to evacuate the pocket by sea and to report in the Schwinmunde Stettin area to participate in the defense of the order line. The evacuation through the port of Libau began immediately. The voyage across the Baltic was dangerous, with the Red Air Force sinking many evacuating ships. The brigade arrived in the German territory on the 4th of February. The Waffen-SS command presented the idea of merging the Nederland into the Northland Division, but the NSB would not permit the formation to be disbanded. On the 10th of February, the brigade was redesignated the 23rd SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Division Nederland, although its strength at time was barely 1,000 men. The new division was attached to Steiner's 11th SS Panzer Army, defending the Northern Order region, Despite its weak strength, the Nederland took part in the abortive operation Sonnenwende and the battles near Altdam in February 1945. In April 1945, the division was split into two Kampfgruppen, based on the reformed 48th SS Volunteer Panzer Grenadier Regiment General Seifert and the 49th SS Volunteer Panzer Grenadier Regiment De Reuter. Kampfgruppe General Seifert had itself and Kampfgruppe De Reuter remained on the northern front on the order. The final Soviet offensive on the 16th of April had broken the German lines by the 25th of April. During the attacks, both formations saw very heavy fighting. The breakthrough by the Red Army cut the lines of communication between the two Kampfgruppen. The Reuter was pushed back, attempting to halt the Soviets near the town of Parshim. On May the 3rd, the Kampfgruppe was attacked by a large number of Soviet tanks. In heavy fighting, the Kampfgruppe halted the enemy attack, destroying the spearhead. Hearing rumors of Americans nearby, 
The formation broke out to the west, surrendering to the US Army and being sent to a POW camp near Kraak. Meanwhile, Kampfgruppe General Seifert was pushed south by the Soviet offensive into the area around Halbe. The remnants of the Kampfgruppe were absorbed into Kampfgruppe Viewege of the 15th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS 1st Latvian. During the hellish fighting in the Battle of Halbe, the General Seifert was annihilated. After the war, the survivors were tried in the Netherlands, with several death sentences being handed down. In Yugoslavia, Wagner faced a trial for war crimes. He was sentenced to death for his actions against the civilian population. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.